Who, in your opinion, is the most important anarchist thinker? Well, a any person I would mention is automatically disqualified because <laughs> any honest anarchist thinker would simply immediately reject the uh, description of being the most important anarchist thinker. Uh, actually, the most... Uh, Probably the most important anarchist thinkers, at least that I know of, are uh, poor, illiterate uh, peasants in uh, uh, Aragon and Catalonia in the 1936, who actually constructed a successful, uh, live uh, anarchist society over a large area, industrial and agricultural. Um, most of them were illiterate. Uh, they left documents. So there, there are some documents left which are extremely interesting. There was, and it wasn't, just, it wasn't spontaneous. This had been after efforts that had been going on for 70 years, uh, efforts that were uh, attempts to uh, crush, to uh, try again, you know, educational programs, all sorts of things. Finally, in the first year of the Spanish Revolution, it broke out and flourished. And it was so terrifying to everyone that uh, every single power uh, combined to crush it. Uh, fascists, uh, Russia, liberal democracies uh, put aside their differences to ensure that this would be crushed. And after they crushed it, uh, they went, you know, they fought the war as the war of succession. Well, you know, they were probably the most important anarchist thinkers. And the same is true everywhere. You take a look at the uh, say, IWW in the United States. I mean, those were important anarchist thinkers who actually carried out actions, which led finally to the development of the American labor movement, which had been bitterly suppressed. The U.S. a very violent labor history. Actually, you know about it around here. Uh, the, uh, uh, but, you know, their, their activities and others like them finally did lead to uh, uh, substantial successes. There's major attacks against them since, but those are successes of people who are constructing uh, uh, worker-managed, uh, uh, community-run uh, uh, societies, which is a kind of an anarchist ideal. And th this is very deeply rooted in the United States. That people forget what it's like. I mean, there was a, a period in American history of, uh, in which there was, a substantial, there was substantial victories for democracy through the 19th century. It was, you know, people write about it, call it the period of self-rule. It was based on the assumption, which is very widespread in the United States, that wage labor is not very different from slavery. I mean, that was the slogan of northern workers who fought in the Civil War. In fact, it was even the slogan of the Republican Party. Uh, slavery is, of course, unacceptable, but so is wage slavery. You have to control your own fate. You read the uh, newspapers... Uh, written during the period of the freest press in the United States, the late 19th century, where working people were running, running their own newspapers, uh, communities, and others. Uh, people in the mills in eastern Massachusetts, origins of the American Industrial Revolution, uh, their press is what we would call anarchist. Uh, these are you know, Irish artisans from the slums of Boston, uh, farm girls from what they called factory girls, young women coming off the farms into the mills. Uh, they just took for granted that those who work in the mills should own them and that uh, we should uh, have, uh, 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 we should create our own self-managed society, integrating with others. That's a deep part of American history. It takes a lot of effort to crush it. 